Okay, this is between... Yeah, okay, so we're on camera now. Okay, great. Um, so I've been asked sort of a question along the theme, 12 steps, step 9, you know, we make amends unless to do so would injure them or others. Um, and, and what is harm? And do we, in the grand scheme of things, do, is there such a thing as harm? Uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I can't read my writing, so that's good. So, well, the uh, other part of that question was, there was the big picture of do we ever really do harm? Yeah. And the smaller picture of, is it possible to not do harm? So there's two ends mm. of the same stick in a way. Mm. Oh. Yeah, okay, thanks to do harm. Okay, uh, so I want to first talk about the 12 steps and sponsors. So it, if you go to a 12-step fellowship, there are so many different ones, alcohol, uh, uh, drugs, food addiction, and, um, and uh, gambling, um, sex addiction, love addiction, um, uh, money addiction, spending addiction, debting addiction, uh, so many of them. I'm sure there's one for, you know, they're inventing new ones every day. So, the thing, you know, the way I, I like to present it, I like to see the world through, and take what you want, leave the rest, through Hawkins' research of levels of consciousness. So, uh, and also that uh, everything is under divine orchestration, even at the different levels of con consciousness. I mean, we can get into very, very esoteric conversations on self-will and, and, and uh, that the world is an illusion. But generally speaking, uh, this, is my, this is my view on it. So when, when in extreme ego, like I was in extreme ego uh, when I was working in the stock market, uh, there was dishonesty, there was food addiction, there was workerism, there was all kinds of addictions going on. And uh, so, and the sense of self was very extremely limited, you know, I was feeling very confined to my body, full of extreme fear and being run by thoughts and addictive patterns. So. The thing, and also, um, you know, being right, <coughs> my experience of things was very much from a self-centered point of view. You know, what, you know, the, and as Hawkins described, there are, there are attractor fields at different levels of consciousness which dominate the, the consciousness. So it's almost like in, in, a, in simplistic form, if I'm at such a level of identification with my body and my thoughts and addiction, the sense of being limited is extreme and it's almost like now this is also I found very very helpful it's like I mean in truth there is no such thing as separation but at these different they're like radio frequencies um, they're like wave bands of consciousness and at, you know it's like if there's levels of the sea you know you've got the fish at the bottom where it's really really dark and uh, and they probably look some of them probably look quite menacing at, at the bottom and it's fish eat fish kind of thing. And <laughs> fish eat fish. Anyway, <laughs> or dog eat dog or whatever it is. So, at the, but that is, a, even though it's all an illusion, at that level, you know, there's a collective, um, there's, a connect, there's a collective domination by that frequency at that level. So it's almost like, yeah, I'm, I'm an addict. I, I'm an extreme workaholic. I'm thinking about what I can eat later on in the day. But actually, I'm on a radio frequency where all other addicts are on the same frequency. And we're not, to some extent you could say, we're not, ha not having individual thoughts, but I'm picking up from radio addiction, radio fear, similar types of thoughts like, oh, I'm g later on in the day I'm gonna have more food, you know, or I'm gonna have more of this, or I need more success, I need more money. I need to get to a different bank because this bank is not enough. So I'm on this radio frequency of not enough, and how can I get what I want? And all the, other, all the other fish at my level, at my radio frequency, are having very similar. You could say, on one level of framing it or seeing it, um, from a collective point of view, yeah, there's a lot of damage. You know, being dishonest, um, you know, uh, uh, with my mother, you know, there was no sense of having any sense of taking into consideration the amount of pain I was doing by destroying myself and allowing her to witness that, because it was all about me. So, on one level, you could describe this thing of harm. Um, 
on, on, a, on a certain level, you could say there is no such thing as harm, but on, a, on, a, on that collective frequency, let's, if we pretend that it's kind of real, it is kind of real, whatever frequency you're on, it feels real. Uh, even if you could say it's, it's an illusion at a deeper level. So you could say my mother, you could say I harmed my mother by being totally unconscious and just uh, trying to destroy myself and have a dishonest conduct. Um, and I was destroying the body, uh, and I was uh, manipulative. So you could say there was a lot of harm being done. I, I would say there wasn't any spiritual consciousness. I was being driven, if you like, by a field, a dominated field of addiction and self-centeredness. I don't sort of see it as it was personal too much. Even though, yes, there, you could say it was personal, and I was inflicting harm. I inflicted harm on mother, which is a dualistic concept. But I was saying I'm being dominated by a radio frequency and I was at a frequency and I was behaving like a fish at that level of the sea and I was having thoughts that most of the fish at my level have you know and I would say even my company had a kind of a vibration frequency we were all quite similar you know uh, in our company so it's like a level of the sea and there was a part of the sea and kind of the you know um, they were, you know, it was like we we're all sort of sharks together and we were all sort of like sharks swimming together at this frequency of the sea. So suddenly both that led to implosion and then there was a spiritual experience. And I think what happens then is there's a thing for, um, so I think you could say there's, looking on that from a 12 step point of view, a sponsor would say, well, yes, you did. You did harm your mother. You know, you, you were destroying yourself. You didn't care about your mother. Um, also, yeah, you weren't the most honourable person at work either. Uh, so, you know, there could be there could be things you could do to make restitution to your mother and to those you might have harmed or inflicted pain upon, uh, and and uh, and own up and uh, and make uh, uh, appropriate restitution. You know, otherwise you're going to sit. You know, now the thing with twelve steps is, I personally think you know when I when you first go in, the sponsor you get, you ask this is just my view, is also a reflection of your level of consciousness and your perception. Like if I have a room full of people and I can ask which one's going to be my mentor or my sponsor, um, you know, I think it's, it's kind of like, you know, um, I, I, you know, people may say like, well, I chose that guy because he's rich and he drives a Jaguar. I've actually heard things along there. I'm not going to, you know, I'm trying to break anything. But, you know, I think those are choices coming more from uh, you know, not really to get spiritually well, you know, or, or you know, those are more like, okay, I, I'm very, very shy and that person knows how to like, you know, work a room. So I think I'll ask him to be uh, my thing. So these things can be unconsciously, you're not sure why you're driven to ask this person to be your spiritual mentor. And I do think sometimes m more uh, one goes in and one is most as influence from a high level of consciousness to choose the, the right person for you spiritually. But each, uh, each sponsor or mentor will have a certain level of consciousness. So some of them, so their ability to say like, you know, when you give a long list of, oh, I think I harmed this person, I harmed my mother, I harmed my father, I harmed, uh, probably harmed uh, some work colleagues. Um, and I, you go through the, with the list with your sponsor and they say, well, this one you don't need to do, or this one, you know, okay, uh, you need to pay back some money in this situation, you quite, weren't quite honest. Um, you need to apologize to that person. But th their capacity to frame what is harm and what is not will also depend on their level of consciousness and their spiritual awareness. And I, I, always, I always think that the universe is uh, always giving assignments and having situations flare up which always have a deeper meaning. So I may, I may be choosing someone who's not, you know, and that's perfect that I don't choose someone who's in total, you know, like St. Francis, you know, that my influence and my capacity to pick someone, and they may, you know, because you don't know in a lot past lifetime, in a past lifetime, I might have been like, a, uh, I might have been a spiritual mentor in a past lifetime and given bad spiritual advice. You know, so the universe is going to go like, you know, I might go, I want a perfect mentor. But, the, you know, the last lifetime, you know, I was saying it's okay to steal donuts. You know, he's all right, I stole, I stole a donut, don't worry about it, it's okay. Well, I'm going and stealing all the biscuits, you know, later on in the day, because I can't tell him not to steal donuts because it'd be too difficult for me. So, 
now in this lifetime, it's like, oh, I like that person. They sort of flare up. And I go, this is going to be the right mentor for me. But then they're a bit dodgy as well. But I don't, you don't know why you cho I chose that person. But then you learn, okay, that sponsor, that mentor wasn't quite right. You know, I, I think this do donut stealing isn't quite good. So then you learn something and then you choose another one to be your mentor. And usually you've learnt a spiritual lesson and you've paid off some karma. But now you choose someone who's at a higher level and they give you uh, more accurate. So this is the thing with harm. Harm, um, I would say, you know, you could contextualize it like when I was in the stock market, I was binging my he head off and I was being dishonest. Uh, on a certain level, you could say that was harm. Also, on another comic level, you could say I didn't do any harm. Um, you could say that everything in the universe is perfectly orchestrated for everyone's highest good at all times. So... Um, uh, so if you look at past lives or even this lifetime, there's a divine orchestration at play so that divine lessons are continuously being learnt. And it can seem unfair and unreasonable. From a certain level, it is unfair and reasonable. You know, like if I go somewhere and I've just bought, you know, a bag of donuts and then I leave them in, in a corner of the room and at the end of the... Uh, I go to get my bag and, like, five donuts are missing. It could say, like, someone has done me harm in this room, and it's unfair. I'm a victim. Someone has stolen my donuts. I'm going to find them and hang them, or whatever it is, you know. Like, <laughs> let me see everyone's bag before you leave. You know, it's like, you know, I have been done wrong. You know, this is unfair. You know, I'm going to, like, raise a court case or whatever it is if I find the person. But on another level, if you can look at past lives and the orchestration and the perfection of the universe, you could say, actually, that person has done me a favour. And I, I had that coming... Yep. I was just going to interrupt with the opposite, then. It's yeah. like, if I was to buy you a bag of donuts, <laughs> and I'm coming from my... Oh, it would be a really kind thing to do to buy Sabiri that bag of donuts. Think of, and I don't, I'm not aware of your position. Yes. I could actually, in that act of what I perceive to be kindness, I could actually be causing more harm. Yes. So, absolutely. So, and, and there could be a perfection in you offering me that bag of donuts as well, even though I might perceive that you had done me harm on a higher level. So, what is harm uh, is seen contextually differently from different levels of consciousness. Um, on, you know, as you go into the deeper levels, uh, as the Course of Miracles says, um, um, that, uh, what is it? Uh, there's a lesson on uh, Course in Miracles, or I think it's on forgiveness, and it says ultimately you find there's nothing to forgive. You know, mm -hmm. when you reach a certain level of consciousness, uh, with the idea of a me and a you disappearing, and the experience of oneness and love prevailing, then the whole idea of you stole my donuts and you owe me a bag of donuts, otherwise I'll never forgive you, kind of thing starts to disappear at a certain level, you know, I'm a victim, you're the perpetrator, you stole my donuts, just own up. So that starts to disappear and there's instant forgiveness. So at different levels of consciousness, what is harm and is it appropriate? But I would say this thing on harm, like wherever you're at, there is an appropriate thing to do, even if you could see it from a higher level, you know, to get to the next level, Often, if you're not an enlightened sage, sometimes the right thing to do wherever you're at is to have a spiritual mentor say, like, go, go to this individual, apologize, and offer to buy them a bag of donuts. So that is, because you're not at, you're not, you know, that's where you're at for you to make the next right choice to go to the, elevate to the next level. So it's, not, it's no good saying, like, well, Buddha is sort of saying there's nothing to forgive, you know, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes, at a certain level, if you're not at that level, the right thing to do for you would be to buy someone a bag of donuts and give it back to them. And then when you're at a more evolved level, the, the, the lesson is different, you know. You see that you don't need to forgive everyone. Actually, so for an enlightened teacher, witnessing someone steal donuts is different from someone at a certain level of consciousness witnessing so. So it's like, okay, call the police, we're going to take him, we're going to press charges on this person for stealing donuts. And that can be the right thing for that person to do. You've done harm. But at a certain level, 
uh, of consciousness when it's witnessed or you know someone's stolen your donuts, it's like, well, you know, uh, the, the, don't, don't worry about it, you know. So there is a, but there is a, but for that incident happening to you wherever you're at, there is also perfection in the universe, uh, which you could say it's unfair and fair at the same time, depending on how you perceive. Um, at a certain level, you could have a debate, yes, he's wrong, he stole my donuts. So uh, he should be placed in put to justice. And another level of consciousness that we could discuss it and say, actually, that was perfect for you, and just forgive him, and that will be f the correct thing for you to move on. But they're different, and they're contextually different, and it depends on your level of consciousness and how you see it, and what the universe is wanting you karmically to learn in that particular scenario that seems to be witnessed in perception. I think the other question that raises is whether if I was to, well, let's use the analogy of donuts here, yeah. as always. <laughs> hot topic in this room. Yes. Yeah. If, if I stole your donuts, <laughs> which in some circumstances would be entirely possible, <laughs> it, it's, and, you, and you were in an enlightened state of being, and you're like, it's really sad that he felt he needed to do that because I would have given them anyway and it's no problem and I don't feel harmed. I actually feel that I've been of service by having these donuts available. <laughs> so you've got a completely different attitude. So there's me. I've, I've gone into recovery and I'm like, oh my God, I stole this man's donuts. I feel so guilty. I did so much harm. And you're like, what donuts? I've forgotten all about that. Yeah. The harm is more about me yes. than it is about yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. What they say in some versions of the steps, and I actually take this version, is that you don't make amends to yourself. You're actually, you're, you're, you don't make amends to yourself. That is part of the, you, you, your amends are in your connection to God. And what you're doing in working the steps is reaching outwards. So therefore, discerning the necessity for making amends, I think, can be quite tricky. Because, because when we start making assumptions about whether we've done harm or not, in a way, that's a form of arrogance. That's one of those supposed character defects coming by. Who are you to say you've done me harm? Do you really think you're that powerful? <laughs> Difficult. Mm. Yeah. Right. I didn't yeah. Quite I didn't, it was, did. was that a question or? No, no, no. no it okay. was. It was. I was thinking. I was. It was, yeah. it was a question, but I was more philosophizing okay. out loud. I, I okay. was like, <laughs> you see the th things that can go through my mind. This is only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, no, it was great. It's great. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> It, it is. I, I, I do. My question to myself really is if I'm thinking I did someone harm, is that just me arrogantly thinking I've had a bigger impact than I possibly have? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, everything depends on your level of consciousness yeah. and what's the next right thing for you to do to elevate. Sometimes that could be, as you see something, that is you elevating to another level of consciousness. Mm. Mm. And you not seeing that should be you buy a bag of donuts and say sorry. Uh, but sometimes there can be a spiritual awakening. Like, you know, you might be at a certain level of consciousness and you've stolen donuts and you've done harm. And if you stay at that level, the appropriate thing is to buy a bag of donuts and say sorry. But suddenly you can suddenly go to another level. Yeah. Where you see you see it from a totally another donut, and then now the appropriate thing is not to buy the bag of donuts, but you're now at, you've translated into another level. Yeah. So yeah, it was good. Okay, thank you. It was really um, deep. <laughs>